Governor Christie has taken bold steps to reform education in the Garden State, from teacher tenure changes to his latest target, the Camden School District, where he has called for state intervention. Joining me now to share his perspective on these changes is Dr. Richard Baza, the Executive Director of the New Jersey Association of School Administrators. Sir, thanks for joining us. Pleasure to be here today. First, let's talk about Camden. Now, yes. we've had several uh, school districts in the northern part of the state that have been under state control for close to two decades. Now the governor wants to take aim at Camden. What do you think about this? I think we're a little surprised that we haven't had intervention in Camden sooner. We've had some of the lowest achieving scores with students in Camden for quite a while. We've had charter schools there. We've had certainly new initiatives to, to try to bring changes there, but we haven't succeeded. And by the way, we haven't succeeded very well wherever state control has been since 1989. Uh, in the very first instance of takeover. So we're looking very carefully at this, but I don't think anyone should be expecting any quick changes given the circumstances to be found there. And you, rose, uh, you raised the question that many are asking, well, what will be different? Because number one, critics will say that in the other school districts, Jersey City, Newark, Patterson, that since the state has been there, they haven't seen any significant improvements. Well, I think if we're going to make the changes that everybody would like to see, and I, and I know the residents there in Camden want to see them as well, as well as the other cities, I think we really have to engage the community in ways that we haven't before. You know, in recent weeks uh, right here, we've talked about the improvements in Union City. And, and really as a key factor, the pride that the community takes in the achievement of their kids in the schools. And so I think we've got to focus on how do we get that community engaged and involved in the education of their kids, whether it's the traditional public schools or charter schools, and how do we get to these kids early? If we know that they're going to fail, let's not wait too long to intervene. Um, let's switch topics and talk about uh, school security. I understand your organization recently held uh, a forum on this issue um, and included there were officials from uh, Newtown, Connecticut. Yes, tell me about that. Yes, uh, school superintendent from Newtown, Dr. Janet Robinson, was uh, our keynote talking about the experiences of that tragedy and quite frankly how we're all unprepared for something of that nature and, and examining what our role is and how do we go about creating that balance of a, an academic environment that demonstrates freedom as well as the security and safety that parents and staff want. But the reality about schools is they are open environments. I think if you were to ride with me at lunchtime, you would see kids on playgrounds, kids getting on buses, coming to schools, walking to schools, out on the athletic fields, in the gymnasium and other places. So I think we've got a real challenge here. How do we make this balance of protecting kids? And so we're trying to learn from what happened at Newtown. We're, we're trying to learn from our colleagues around the state and nation, talking to security experts. And so our head, our, uh, head of the New Jersey Homeland Security was there, people from the Department of Education, architects, to say, well, what can we do in a reasonable way to protect our children? Reasonable way, are we talking armed guards or something not quite as drastic? Well, we're talking in New Jersey that school districts are saying we want armed guards. We've had police officers in the schools for positive reasons for a long time. Now we're starting to look a little bit more at the security reasons, not only where we've seen the most trouble in schools, but throughout the state because parents and staff are really anxious about what's happening. But we know that an armed guard alone is, is not the answer. There are, there are many facets here. I think technology can help us to, to play a role. But again, I think this, the sense of community surrounding their school and caring is really an, an important part. Whenever there's a tragedy, whether it was Superstorm Sandy or, or something of this terrible nature, we see that schools are the heart of the community and people rally toward them to try to protect and support them. Before I let you go, I have one more topic I want to talk about in that. Uh, the administration uh, rolled out its proposal for evaluations for principals, for teachers. What are your thoughts? Some, some folks like the NJEA have concerns that uh, student test scores play too much of a role in this. Well, we're supportive but have concerns as well. I think we're rolling it out too fast. I know the state law requires that. But I've, I've heard even this past week that uh, the senator in charge of the Education Committee has expressed some concerns as well about the implementation. Mm -hmm. Senator Ruiz, yes. Senator mm -hmm. Ruiz. So what we're talking about is do we have the resources, both human and capital, to, to get this done well? And shouldn't we be focusing on those schools that need the most help rather than those schools that are the most successful to put all of this on the schools at the same time? And let's watch carefully the role of the principal because that's where he or she has got really the toughest job in the year ahead. Sir. We thank you for your insight. Pleasure to be with you.